Cool. Hi. Uh, well, Alex and me are both founders of vPlay. And if you did not hear of vPlay before, you've probably used an app um, of ours. Actually, the Qt World Summit app of this year was developed uh, by us and uses a lot of the vPlay components in it. So um, basically, what is vPlay? vPlay is a framework or an engine that extends Qt and um, makes it easier to develop mobile applications and games with it. And um, in addition to working on, on vPlay, we also work together with uh, clients a lot. And in the past five years, um, we have developed a lot of mobile applications to, uh, based on Qt and on vPlay. And we'll share in this session our learnings and best practices with you guys. So at the end of the talk, you should walk out of the door and have some like good tips and productivity tips that you can use in your daily workflow and process. Cool. So Alex will start now with uh, highlighting the first showcase and the first learnings from that one. OK. Uh, so our first showcase we brought is a service app for mobile carrier for T-Mobile. Um, a service app. So believe me or not, the service app is especially hard to make it right. Um, I guess you all um, have already used the service app from, from your mobile carrier. Uh, what's the main challenge? Um, if a user is opening a service app, um, he's not opening it for getting uh, entertained, but um, he wants to get information, or she wants to get information very quickly, or even worse, um, there is an actual issue that needs to be solved. So what does this mean? Um, first of all, a um, service app um, needs a high reach, uh, meaning that um, as a service provider, you want um, to support um, as many platforms as possible out there. Um, so speaking of mobile, um, I guess you all know roughly the numbers of the global market share of mobile platforms as of now. Um, so you might argue that um, it's enough to just um, go to iOS and Android. Uh, but in reality, um, you also have to have a look at um, actually the regional markets. So the global market share is worldwide. But um, as an example for our customer here, um, the regional market share was about um, uh, the situation that actually Windows Phone had a higher market share than iOS. So there is um, a third platform that um, you have to keep in mind, depending on the region. Um, yeah, so as mentioned, you want to go um, on a lot of platforms. Um, but this also implies um, that every platform and every app on every platform should look and feel native to that platform. Um, so as a mobile carrier is actually selling phones um, with app stores on it, um, um, mobile carrier also wants to um, provide a great experience in apps. So uh, an iOS app should look and feel like an iOS app, and an Android app, for example, should feel and like like an Android app. And uh, coming from the look and feel, the next challenge is um, actually if you're a startup and um, having a super cool app idea, you usually can um, design your backend around that app idea so everything is perfect. But in reality, um, there are a lot of existing backends out there. There are different data stores and databases you have to, um, to communicate with, and there are also different APIs. And even worse, um, most of those backends are not linked to each other, so there are different sessions, and you have to authenticate with each of um, those backends. So this actually leads, uh, leads to the um, last point here. This is um, some custom networking. Um, especially for our client, it was important to support um, zero sign-on on mobile network or single sign-on um, with all the API endpoints. So it was also necessary to um, include some custom code or existing libraries that should also be um, yeah, ready to go in the service app. So what we came up with is this app. Um, it's actually um, available for more than 99% of all customers for our client. Um, this is because um, we um, developed it for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, as I already mentioned. Um, as you can see, the look and feel is native to the platform. So on the left is iOS, on the right is Android. And if you have a look, for example, um, the navigation bar is uh, iOS native, but also the toolbar on Android um, looks and feels like um, the Android toolbar. So what you can't see here, but what's actually also included um, are all custom animations that are specific to the platform. So screen transition from the iOS app is like pushing it in from the side, or Android is fading over, et cetera. Um, so that's all included. Uh, also, what's more important here is um, that both apps, are, or all platforms, actually share the same business logic. 
So that's not only important for the initial um, app development, but what's more important is um, the ongoing maintenance. Because if there is a bug report, it's specific to a platform, and probably it's on all platforms, you need different development teams, and you need a lot of resources for actually maintaining um, the app, which um, makes it a lot easier if you have a shared business logic and only have um, one core base um, of your code and can use a single development team for maintaining all platforms that you're out there. And uh, last but not least, um, we were also able to integrate push notifications into all those apps natively, um, thanks to our vPlay plugins, um, uh, that the components um, that integrate native functionality right into the framework. So, for example, we use push notifications here for pushing important messages to the user, but for example, it's also possible to integrate in the purchases, etc. Um, some native functionality that's not really um, in the Qt framework itself. So what was our learning from the app? Um, actually a lot. Uh, we did some service apps for mobile carriers um, for a long time, for about 10 years, but this was actually the first one we did with the Qt framework. Um, so all the components that we developed for this app um, was actually the foundation for our vPlay apps components that are part of vPlay engine. Um, so what we did is um, we just um, used all the components um, and stripped them out of the code base um, added some platform extractions, um, like already mentioned, um, the animations or the custom look and feel on each platform. Um, yeah, and uh, bundled all that together in an own toolkit named vPlay Apps, part of our vPlay engine. And this next step, um, we just migrated um, the custom Qt app to, vPlay, to a vPlay Apps app, um, which actually allowed us to strip down the code um, that is needed for that kind of service app by more than 50%. So I guess that's actually a number that you really want to keep in mind um, if you can save half of the code and also only need one development team um, and not three different development teams. And I guess that's actually a really, really good argument for using vPlay and Qt for your mobile app development. All right, cool. Thanks, Alex. So before talking about the next showcase, I'd like to take one step back and ask the question why we developed this showcase in the first place. And uh, the question here is, which app do you want, actually want to develop? So in some cases, this is quite clear because maybe you're a company or an enterprise and you want to make an app for uh, branding reasons, for example, or to do like a customer-facing app or an internal uh, application that you can use in a company. Um, but there's also other motivations. For example, you could make an app um, because just you're interested in the development process because you want to improve your coding skills you want to learn something, uh, or just because of the fun of it. And um, I think that the best reason actually why you could make an app is if you actually want to make something that is use, uh, useful and valuable for the user. So this providing value is actually, I think, that the key decision um, that uh, sh should decide, is your app worth the time making it, or is it just like, one other app like the other two million out there in the app stores. So there's just too many apps out there to get found if, if your app is not really providing value to the user. And uh, ultimately, this valuableness uh, really points, identifies itself uh, if you have a look at one metric of your application, that's retention. So how often does a user come back to your application? And this is also like a really good measure how useful your application actually is. So what we did next is we had a look at uh, studies and analysis where you could see what kind of applications are there actually that have high retention rates. So if you have a look at this uh, left diagram here on the x-axis, there's the retention rate over 30 days uh, sorted by app and game categories. And on the vertical axis, there's the frequency of, uh, of use per week. And where you really would would want to be as, uh, as an application where you have like a really good chance of standing out, it's actually in this number one top right uh, corner here. And um, the kind of categories, app categories that are listed there is weather applications, of course, like we almost check it daily, of uh, finance applications, and then there's card games here. This is really interesting, especially if you have a look at the uh, frequency overall on iOS and Android. Uh, the typical frequency of a card game user is five times a week um, that the user opens up a card game. 
And also retention rates are like double of all of the other game genres and also of the other app, and, uh, app genres, for example. So it was clear to us that we need, um, we need to develop some kind of application in this genre because it's like really, it's, uh, it's promising. And uh, as a next step, we then had a look at the existing card games that have been there and that are on the, out in the app stores. And one of the first ones that we realized, of course, is the popular Uno game. Uh, if you have a look at the download numbers, that's like massive. That's 50 to 100 million downloads. That's like the top tier level you can reach in the app stores. Uh, and um, we played the, the game uh, ourselves, of course, and had a look at the reviews. And what was really interesting there, that a lot of users were not happy with it. Although it had so many downloads, the users were not really happy about the implementation of the game. Um, uh, most critics said that it's like it takes too long to, um, so you get into the game, that you can actually start the real game, uh, that it's like too many uh, monetization stuff in it, um, and a lot more. And then as a next step, um, we had an analysis of like other games that were similar to uh, Uno and also had a look at these. And what was really interesting here is that you can see the download numbers here. So with this Uno card game, it's like a, a, a clone of Uno basically, as a half million up to a million downloads. Uh, and this was really fascinating because if you can reach this with this kind of user interface, this is a clear indicator there is a, like um, a market gap where users are uh, obviously not really happy with the main product and are even coming to, to games that look like this. So this really identified um, a potential there uh, where we step into. So that's why we built uh, a card game actually and even as a next step, not only the card games have really high retention rates, but multiplayer games uh, have even higher retention rates because whenever you can play with friends, you tend to return and continue to the game more often. So yeah, that's what we did. So um, we, we built a you know, card game um, out of in, in a single month, single developer, uh, and that game so far already garnered more than 300,000 downloads with zero marketing costs in it. So this is really like the, the gaps that you can look out for in the App Store. Where are these potentials there where the retention rate is high and potential is high? but the competition is weak. Good, so what we learned out of this is that uh, doing a lot of research before you actually start the game is, is better than just doing something for fun or for, uh, for the fun of it. Um, but having a look at the App Store um, analytics closely really pays off in the long run. So what we also did in, um, in the one card game uh, is really, really tweaked the App Store uh, description a lot. So this is the best bet you have in getting downloads for free, basically, because there is a lot of users uh, searching in the App Stores and App Stores optimization. It's really something that you should continuously uh, A-B test and prototype on a weekly, weekly basis. So there's tools that you can use for this or even use the built-in Google Play services tool where you can A-B test description, title, icons, and a lot more. Uh, also, it really pays off to focus on the app and game categories that show some potential in the first run. And then after you've built the, the first prototype, the first version of your application, constantly analyze it and try to improve it. So, um, so far we, had, we have released like 20 different versions of this game in the app stores. And um, this really went a long way because we used all the, the data that we got from the analytics from the app to then improve it. And it's, um, without analytics, we, we would have been like blind and wouldn't know what the users are doing. So what is already a common in websites that you use Google Analytics and stuff like this, also track your app analytics users in order to make your app or game better. Um, and internally for this game, we are using uh, Amplitude and uh, also I'm a big fan of Amplitude, all kinds of analytics topics. It's really top-notch analytics system that's um, free of charge. And it's way better than Google Analytics, for example. Really uh, emphasize to check this out. So we're providing a Qt plugin for Amplitude, which you can get from vplay.net slash Qt. And what was also important for this game here is that uh, we also played, um, put close attention to uh, crash reporting and, um, and beta testing before actually releasing new versions. So there's also services for this, like Hockey, Hockey App and Crashlytics. Uh, that you can use and that really helps you to bring the crashes down and 
actually find the reasons for the crashes and then are able to fix it. And probably the biggest learning of, uh, of all this is that retention is really the most critical um, KPI that you can have in your app. Actually, not only in your app, but in every consumer-facing product that you're making. And there's a few tips that you can use for mobile app development how to increase this retention rate. Uh, for example, the very first start is really, really important. So um, I'm, I'm uh, all the time um, amazed at how, how many applications start on the first screen with a login screen. Um, in my opinion, you're losing a lot of customers, and we also have seen a lot of apps doing this, uh, losing a lot of customers because they do not see the value of the application and then just leave your game. So do not make a login screen, but skip the login screen at any point where the user already is really engaged with the product and really is about to use it properly. Also, no account creation required. Um, what we also did is uh, test different timings for push notifications that we send out. For example, after one day, you get a free gift if you return. After three days, you get one again. And um, like I already said, the, the multiplayer by itself is really motivating for users to come back because if you get a message that a friend invited you to play with him, this is like a really high motivation that you join the game again. Uh, I think what is also pretty, what we did a good job here in, uh, in this game here is that multiplayer and generally social apps, you always have the chicken egg problem that you don't have enough users initially that can play together. Um, we solved this in this uh, case here that we allowed a late join feature so that players could jump uh, and join into an already existing and running uh, game. Um, so basically, if there's at least one user currently playing, that you can already join the game there. Uh, and then, of course, a, a lot of gamification features should be in, in every game, uh, which are uh, leaderboards where you can compare yourself with high scores or that you can see very easily this is the bubble here, what kind of rank and achievements the user has currently reached and how you compare to others. And interestingly, all these things are not only for games, very important, but you can also use this in your mobile apps. And this is exactly what we did with the Qt Worlds um, Summit app as well. So if you, if you have a look uh, in the app in the social section, you will find a leaderboard there where you can compare yourself with other players and um, even more, we, we use the whole messaging system that we've built originally for the gaming part, which is now also usable for um, mobile apps as well. You can have a full user system and messaging system bundled into your Qt app. Um, so tip here is to reuse components as, as much as you can. So this is true for this social system, but also for the Qt um, Quick Controls, for example, or just uh, the, the replay controls you can use to have a native UI look and feel on iOS as well. So another development tip I'd like to share is to do most of the testing actually on desktop. Uh, for this, we do provide um, the option to change the look and feel and simulate the platform while you're on a desktop PC. So you can see here how you can switch from iOS to Android theme. So I use this because deployment to mobile always takes a little bit longer. Uh, and also uh, optimize um, your application for multiple screen sizes and resolutions. So if you're running the World Summit app on a tablet, for example, you will see that um, you, you make better use of the available space. And you can even simulate this by dragging the um, window size. And there's shortcuts for that, how you can change the resolution quickly. All right, so now I'd like to um, show you some of the, I think the, the biggest development boost that most development teams can have, which is QML Live. So who of you guys have, has heard of QML Live before? Right, it's a couple, three, four. Um, I'll show you a quick video of what, what this is able to do. So what you can see here, is um, a QML live server on the top left, which basically forwards the QML code that you're currently writing to all connected devices. So what you can see here, I have a Qt Creator opened. I now change um, QML code. For example, I change the theme color from blue to orange, 
And now I press save. I don't compile anything, run anything. Nothing happens at all. But I just press save, and what is now happening, that on all connected devices, they look uh, instantly updates. So um, this is really awesome, because number one reason, there is some occurrences where you cannot test fully on your desktop. For example, you have like uh, really native controls that you want to test, like you can see here with the uh, alert dialogs, input dialogs, for example, alert sheets. You cannot really simulate this on desktop. You need a mobile device for this. Or if you have like applications that run with sensors or um, maps applications, for example, here you can toggle the status bar of, an, of a mobile app. And what you can see here is an iPhone connected to a Windows device. So I'm just sharing the screen with an AirPlay um, receiver application here on my Windows desktop. So what QML Live actually in, allows you to do is to deploy to any platform and any um, system from any desktop OS where, where you are working on. So you could also deploy from Linux to an iPhone machine or from Linux to an embedded device or whatever platform you want to really target in. Uh, what you can see here is the Android emulator, uh, which is that just started to show that it's also working from the emulator finally. And um, this is the desktop client, which also allows you to, to simulate to a certain extent. Uh, what is also really awesome is that you also get log output of the remote devices. So you can find out if there is any issues. If the app crashes, you get the error log sent to your server. And all of this is all working locally in your local Wi-Fi network. So a redeployment is really just a matter of seconds to all the platforms simultaneously. This is really, really a, a huge time saver if you compare this with like normal mobile deployment. For example, deployment to a mobile uh, on Android usually takes one to three minutes. Uh, on iOS, sometimes even more. It depends on how many assets you got in the application. Um, with QML Live, only the changed files are transferred. And uh, redeployment, like you've seen before, is in a fraction of the time, just like a few seconds. This really sums up if you consider how often a day a typical developer restarts an application. It's like 100 times, maybe fast ones, 200 times. Uh, and believe me, before you have seen this in practice and you have done this, you, you will not believe how many time this saves you a day. So this one minute or two minute uh, waiting might not seem like a lot, but this sums up quickly. And this is time that you can spend efficiently on, on doing like important tasks. Uh, QML Live was actually started by Pelagicore. Uh, and it's uh, mainly used from, from, my, uh, from what I've heard in the automotive suit, but it's really perfectly fine for also using it for mobile development. And um, what we have done is to optimize this for mobile development and um, embed this into Qt Creator. So there's an own run button in Qt Creator that you can press. And uh, then automatically the server and the clients are started. And there is also in the next weeks a new um, QML Live app coming to the app stores that allows you to deploy from your Qt Creator directly on your mobile and Android devices without even having to install any SDKs, NDKs, or whatsoever. Yes? Does it work outside of Qt Creator or so, like via command line? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you can start the server basically also from command line. You can also embed it with continuous integration servers. So that's, that's also possible. Uh, and the whole thing is open source. So Pelagico start, uh, started it open source. We made our improvements to the app, to QML Live, also open source. So you can just compile it yourself or use the predefined um, Qt Creator plugin that we are providing to your, uh, with your uh, Qt applications. What is also really cool about this is that usually uh, setting up mobile plugins is really a uh, quite of a hassle. So for example, if you want to add amplitude analytics or if you want to add in-app purchases, mobile ads, push notifications, this is really taking a lot of time with each plugin. And then there's like difficulties um, when different versions of the uh, SDK, for example, have uh, are in place. So this is actually also solved with this solution because we are taking care of this with the QML Live app in the stores. Yeah, also, I'd like to mention that this is um, working both with vPlay components, but also with regular Qt Quick QML components. 
Uh, it, of course, the reloading itself only works with QML code. So if you have C++ code, you still need to rebuild the application. Um, and regarding this, I have a second question uh, for you guys. So how, how many of you are, are using C++ and QML, like a mixture in, in your projects? Okay, the most. Is there anybody using QML only? All right, we are. <laughs> so uh, actually all of the applications that, that you have seen before, all the 40 applications um, we have published so far, also all of the demos that you can download on the vPlay website, and even including the Qt World Summit app, this is 100% QML application code. So of course our components itself is C++ because they are uh, highly critical for performance, especially gaming side is everything in C++ written. But the application logic itself is, uh, all of it is in QML. And one of the biggest performance improvements and um, time savings that you will see is if you use QML as, as much of pos uh, as possible. So one reason being that QML life is existing there and you have more rapid redeployment testing times, but it's also it's easier to learn for new developers and easier to onboard new developers. Um, and it's just, uh, very less lines of code, which also transitions to uh, generally more, more time saved. Of course, there's exceptions. Uh, if you already have a big C++ base, code base, or if your team is really skilled in C++ development, of course, go ahead, um, go for it. Cool. So that were some of our um, productivity tips and improvements. If you would like to see this QML live things in a lifetime and live in action, just join my uh, talk at 4 p.m. at the big room on the top. I'll show you a live demo there and really connect with all the different devices that you have seen in the video. And also do some live coding there that you can see the redeployment. Uh, generally, if, if you have any um, questions or if you need any help on your existing or new projects with Qt for mobile, just get in touch with us. We're happy to help. Thanks. <laughs>